Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit, and let God's Word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate His great love for us, His sacrifice on the cross, His mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word who was at the beginning, was with God, and is God. Indeed, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was and is life. Yes, in Him. John 1, verses 1 through 4. And you know, brothers and sisters, I always enjoy reading that. And I know you wonder how that is so important for me. And it should be important for you. Because in Matthew 24, and I think it's verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word endures forever. Dear brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, we are so happy for you to join us in this ark of God's word. For faith comes by hearing God's word. And if anyone keeps his word, the love of God has been truly perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. 1 John 2 verse 5. We know there is no other God. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6. What does God call us to do? Paul said in Ephesians, when he was addressing the Ephesians, Become a servant of this gospel, the word, by the gift of God's grace, given you through the working of his power. Ephesians 3, 7. And now we will be reading from Ephesians 5, Imitators of God. Be imitators of God, therefore, as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant sacrificial offering to God. But among you, as is proper among the saints, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or crude joking, which are out of character, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Be children of light, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Test and prove what pleases the Lord. Have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that is illuminated becomes a light itself. So it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Boy, that's so important in this day and age, and all we hear is about being woke. Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Pay careful attention, then, to how you walk. How do we walk? According to the Spirit. Not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to reckless indiscretion. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. In mentioning wokeness, the woke crowd would do well to read Paul's words here. Pay, uh, pay careful, uh, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now Paul continues to address the Ephesians, talking about relationships. And we are again in Ephesians 5, 
And now we are at verse 21, talking about wives and husbands. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And I just have to add, folks, you know, both my husband and I, we have been to a number of weddings. And it's always interesting when they are standing together and the stories they relate of how they got together or what they think is going to sustain them. And sometimes it's just incredible because when you hear what they have to say, you have to ask yourself or think, how is that going to keep them together as not only a husband and wife in this day and age, but let alone as a couple walking as children of God, walking in the spirit. So submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Put him first, both you husbands and wives. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. And for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is head of the church. Husbands, don't forget that. Christ is at your head. His body, which he is the Savior. Now, as a church submits to Christ, so also wives submit to their husbands and everything. Well, how can we do that? For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. That's how. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to sanctify her, cleansing her by the vanish washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a glorious church without stain or wrinkle or any such blemish but holy and blameless in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself indeed no one ever hated his own body but he nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church, for we are members of one body. And you know, folks, I can tell you, I don't know how many times I've heard wives, wives and even those who are wives and mothers nearest and dearest to me say, well, I don't want to be a slave to my husband. He shouldn't be over me. Listen, <laughs> we're not talking about slavery to a, a terrible, wicked master here. We're talking about husbands who love their wives as Christ loved the church. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and their home and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This mystery is profound, but I am speaking about Christ and the church. See, he's actually talking about Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Because the church embodies, we, are, we embody the church. And though we're speaking about Christ and the church, we, are all, we just said we are members of that body. Amen. So that's who we're talking about. We're not talking about as if church is some other object entity existing out there. We are the members of the body. Amen. That's the church. And this is how we are to behave in the order that God has ordained for us. Well, in these things, as the world becomes more and more rebellious against God, but those of us who love the, love the Lord show our love for him by obeying him. And then this behavior that Paul mentioned, this is how we do it. Well, thank you for joining us for this Lion's Table. We hope it has been a blessing to you. And as always, we invite you to join us again next time.